Today, we are going to create this smooth zoom transition like Sanchise inside the pre version of DaVinci Resolve. I will also be sharing project files in a community post, but it will be available for the channel members only. So, if you are interested, you can get it just in 29 rupees. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so here I am on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve, and as you can see, I have already added two clips, and the second clip is starting from frame 25. But you might want to adjust it according to the music you have. So, before you follow me, make sure to do that. Now, first thing first, select both clips, then right click on any of them, and from the menu, look Look for new fusion clip click on it and it will create a new fusion composition okay now simply click on this fusion page icon to open it all right so once you are in fusion you will have something like this now the first thing we are going to do is match this second clip with our first one we have to match the face properly so the transition looks seamless so for that click on this merge to node then go to inspector and decrease the size a little bit keep decreasing it until it matches properly with our first clip so let's keep it somewhere around 0.35 maybe now click on this Y offset box and drag it upwards like this. So keep it somewhere around here. Now in order to match it properly, we have to decrease the opacity of our second clip so that we can see the first clip. That way we can make a precise adjustment. So for that click on this blend slider and drag it to the left side. Let's keep it somewhere around 0.8 maybe. Now go to viewer. Then if you press ctrl and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in like this. Then press the middle mouse button and drag it to pan around. Let's keep it somewhere around here. And now let's adjust it. So click on this Y offset box and drag it upwards like this. Keep it around here. Um, I guess I have to adjust the X a little bit more. So click here and adjust it. Um, do it accordingly because you might have a different clip. So you have to do it manually. Um, I guess I'm going to increase the size a little bit more. So let's increase it. And also let's adjust this Y offset. Um, also the X offset a little bit more keep it around here okay so i guess it's looking good now let's increase the blend value to all the way up and now what we're going to do is add a mask to the second clip so click on this media in two node and add a list mask to it now go to inspector and increase the soft edge a little bit let's change the value to something like 0.4 okay now we have to animate this mask so add a keyframe for this width and height then decrease the value to zero and also decrease the height value to zero now go to end of your composition and increase the width to all the way up then increase the height to all the way up. Now simply open the spline tab then select this ellipse box click on the zoom to fit icon and select the keyframes. Press S on your keyboard now simply press T and it will reveal this is in and out section. So what you are going to do is click on this is out section and drag it upwards keep it somewhere around 42 and also click on this is in section and increase it slightly let's keep it somewhere around 34 maybe okay. Now simply close this spline tab, then go to crayon 0, double click here and play it. So we'll have something like this and you see it's looking pretty smooth. Now if you want you can make the animation even more faster by changing the curve but I'm going to keep it as it is okay. Now let's get into the main animation. So click on this merge to node and add a transform node to it. Uh, let's also adjust the viewer so I will simply go here and click on this arrow and change it to fit. Now simply go to frame 0. Make sure that transform nodes is selected, then go to inspector and add a keyframe for the size. Double click on the size box and change the size to 5. Click here on to apply the changes and we'll have something like this. Now go to frame 30, double click on the size box and change the value to 1. Click here once to apply the changes and we'll have something like this, okay? Now open the spline tab once again and let's deselect this ellipse box and click on the zoom to fit icon. Now select the keyframes, then press S on your keyboard. Now take this top handle and drag it like this. Take this bottom handle and move it like this. Now if I go to frame 0 and double click here and then play it, we'll have something like this. And you see it's actually looking pretty cool. Okay. Now let's move on to the second animation. And for that we're going to add another transform node. But before we do that, I'll simply click on this middle mouse button and drag the nodes slightly like this. Now let's click on this transform 1 node and add a transform 2 node. Now go to the point where your animation ended, which will be frame 30. And from this point, we are going to move 10 frames backward. So click here and drag it to frame 20. Now simply go to inspector and add a keyframe for the center XY and also for the size. And from there move 30 frames forward, it will be frame 50. And at this point, simply increase the size until it fits properly. We have to zoom in the second clip. And then also click on this Y offset box and drag it downwards. So let's keep it around here. And we have to adjust the size a little bit more. So click on the size box and increase it. So let's keep it around maybe 3. Okay. And let's also adjust the Y offset. Mm, I guess I'm going to go to viewer and decrease the size a little bit. Okay. Now let's adjust it properly. So click on this Y offset box and increase it slightly. Click on the size box and increase it even bit more. So let's keep it around 0.32 maybe. 
and let's adjust the y box a little bit more now let's adjust the curve so double click on this transform one node to deselect it click on the zoom to fit icon then select the keyframes then press s on your keyboard now what we're going to do is click on this lock icon on this is in and out section and now simply click on this box and increase the size let's keep it somewhere around 85 okay now if i go to frame zero double click here and play it will have something like this and as you can see it's actually looking pretty smooth okay but of course we have to fix this area so for that we'll simply click on this merge one node then go to inspector and scroll down and go to this L section click here and change the edges to mirror and now it will fix it okay so the next thing we are going to do is add a little bit of motion rails now we have to create it because unlike after effects we don't have a dedicated plugin for that now in order to create it simply click on this transform 2 node then press ctrl plus trace and search for time speed node press enter to add it then go to frame 20 because this is where our second animation starts then from there go to inspector and add a keyframe for the delay and also for the sample speed now go to frame 50 and at this point double click on this delay box and change the value to minus 0.1 click here once to apply the changes now double click on this sample speed box and change the value to 0 0.5 click here once to apply the changes now simply deselect this transform 2 node and click on the zoom to fit icon select the keyframes then press s on your keyboard now just like before press t click on this lock icon and increase the value keep it somewhere around 50 now if i go to frame 0 double click here and play it you will see we'll have something like this and we are getting a little bit of motion trails which is actually looking pretty smooth okay now let's continue so the next thing we are going to do is enable motion blur and also do little bit of refinements so first let's enable the motion blur click on this transform one node go to inspector and switch to this settings tab and here you will see this motion blur tick the box then increase the quality to all the way up and also increase the shutter angle to all the way up now if you want you can double click on this quality box and change the value to something like 20 or 30 and also double click on this shutter angle box then change the value to something like 720 it will make the motion blur a little bit smoother and better but keep in mind that it will also make motion blur a little bit heavier which will take time to process okay now let me click here once to deselect everything and just like that you can enable motion blur for the rest of the nodes now let's go to edit page and preview it okay let me go to frame 0 and double click here and play it you will see it will have something like this the motion blur okay and it's actually looking pretty smooth all right now let's continue so the next thing we are going to do is add a little bit of warp to our animation so for that simply move to this top left section and here you will see this effects icon click on it then go to this effects section and from there add this adjustment clip so click and drag it to the timeline and place it somewhere around here then what we're going to do is move the playback head uh, let's move it to frame 20 and then click on this adjustment clip and move it where your playback head is okay now simply go to end of your composition press ctrl plus b to cut and select this right side then press backspace to delete it now place the playback head on top of it and open it in the fusion page okay so in order to create the warp animation we need to use the lens distort node so click on this median one node then press ctrl plus space and search for lens distort press enter to add it then go to frame zero now go to inspector and click on this mini arrow beside lens distortion model and we are going to animate this distortion and anamorphic squeeze so add a keyframe for both of them then go to middle of your composition which will be frame 19 i guess and at this point simply increase the distortion to all the way up and click on this anamorphic squeeze slider and decrease it slightly let's keep it somewhere around 0.6 okay now go to end of your composition and at this point double click on this distortion box then change the value to 0 now click on this anamorphic squeeze box and change the value to 1 click here once to apply the changes and we'll have something like this now click on the zoom to fit icon select the both keyframes press s on your keyboard take this bottom handle and move it like this also take the right side of it and move it like this now take this top handle and try to move it somewhere around here now let's adjust the dark blue one which is our anamorphic squeeze so click on this handle and move it somewhere around here and take this handle and move it around here uh, also click on this handle and try to drag it somewhere around here i guess i'm going to click here and squeeze this a little bit more and also do the same for this one click here and try to make it somewhere around here now let's go to frame 0 double click here and play it you will see we'll have something like this but we have a little bit of problem the distortion is only appearing on our second clip which you don't want we want it to appear on our first clip and second clip simultaneously so for that we need to adjust the position of our adjustment clip so click on this edit page icon to open it all right now let's adjust the position of our adjustment clip to make the warp better now i want the warp to start at this current frame so we have to move the adjustment clip little bit backwards so simply click on this adjustment clip and move it backwards let's move it somewhere around um, i guess maybe seven frames backward would look good 
Now at this point simply go to frame 0 and double click here and play it. So now we have something like this and as you can see the work is actually looking pretty smooth. Okay. Now there's only one thing to do is add the overlay. So for that what we're going to do is click on this adjustment clip then press Alt and left click and drag it upwards to make a copy. Now open it in the fusion page and the first thing first click on this distortion node and press backspace to delete it. We are going to click on this overlay and drag it and then take its output and connect it with the output of our media in one node. Now go to inspector and change the apply mode to screen then go to frame 0 and at this point add a keyframe for the blend change the value to 0 then go to middle of your composition which is the frame 19 and increase the blend to all the way up then go to end of your composition and decrease the blend to 0. Now simply click on the zoom to fit icon and select the keyframes press S on your keyboard and just follow me click here and drag it like this click on this right side and drag it like this now let's go to edit page and preview it so this is what we have and it's actually looking pretty smooth now if you want you can make it even more better by adding half tone and hdf animation but i am going to stop it here so if the tutorial was helpful then give this video a like subscribe to the channel and make sure to watch my other videos i'll see you in the next one so see ya